Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly FM84. Thank you for joining me on another video right here on YouTube. So we are currently doing the Red Bull Salzburg Rebuild Challenge. If you've been with us the past couple of days, you would have seen that in yesterday's episode, we managed to do a domestic double. We won the league, we won the cup. We are after a Champions League. We have pushed forwards to the 4th of September 2024 in today's episode. That means we are through the summer transfer window. And as always, we're going to be kicking off this episode with the players that have left the club, the players that have arrived at the club. And then we'll show you how we have got on at the start of the brand new season and also fill in the gaps for the finances and how we're getting on with the club vision. So let's get into it. The first player to leave the club in this transfer window was Babacar. He went to LASK for 45000 We then lost Jerome on. Anguini, Anguini, uh, a player that I am glad has left the club because it means I don't have to keep saying his name poorly. I apologise to Jerome. Uh, Brighton came in, snapped him up for £13.5 million. The next player to leave was Bernardo. He goes to Leeds on a free transfer. Uh, wasn't really happy about losing Bernardo. He's one of the players who was one of the older players at the club. Um, he was perfectly sound as a defender. The only thing was he likes the referees. He likes getting himself in a bit of trouble. It's always on the yellow card and the red card list. So if he's not always playing, maybe it's not a bad thing that he's left. But I would have liked to have got a bit of transfer money for him. But that's not a problem. The next one to leave was Nicholas Ziefeld. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed about this one. He's a player that I really did like. He was the anchor man at the base of the midfield. Leicester came in. They put the carrot in front of him and said, look, this is what we want to offer. Club thought it was a fair enough offer. He wanted to leave in the end. Leicester got their man at £23.5 million in the bank. The next player to leave was Junior Adamu. He went to Strasbourg for £1.3 million before Nico ended up leaving. And this is the buy cheap sell high plan coming into play a player that we bought from barcelona b for 10 million pounds and we have now sold him to sporting for 20 million pounds another one though who was a bit of an integral player in terms of the midfield he sat with Seavald, with morton with gilmore and they were players that really were propelling the team forwards however it's 20 million pounds i'm not too sure he's the finished article which is a little bit disappointing too but we could go out and replace him and fingers crossed we will get an upgrade at that position. The next player to go out was Doda Guindo. He went to Troyes for £675,000 before Mark Casado went to Altach Juniors on a free transfer. So that means we had raised £59 million in the transfer window and we went and spent all of it. The first player we signed was Ayup Aideen. He's a player who plays in the middle of the park. A bit like Nico. He isn't the finished article. 20 years old. He's German. Comes from Bayern Munich. I think for £8 million rising to nine, he's going to be a bargain. Bit of a rough diamond that we can polish. Put him in alongside Morton and Gilmore. And I think we will have a sound player in Aideen. We signed Facundo Farias. He comes to us for £6 million, 22-year-old winger who can play as an attacking midfielder, a midfielder or as a striker. So again, that versatility to be able to play different roles is brilliant. However, when you look at him, 12 pace, 14 acceleration, 17 dribbling, 12 finishing, 15 first touch, 16 for long shots, 17 for technique, off the ball 16, work rate of 8. That is the only concern with Farias. Is he going to work hard enough for the team? I'm not 100% sure, but he's a player for the price that we have paid, uh, just £6 million. I think he could be a bargain down the line. The next player we bought in was Antonio Anusa. He is a bit of a wonder kid, 19 years old, Norwegian player. He got him from Bruges. He can play wide left, he can play wide right, he can play through the middle at a push. Uh, looking at him, 14 pace, 13 acceleration, 15 dribbling, 14 first touch, 15 free kicks. Technique of 15, work rate of 13, flair of 16. This is a player that when we get him on the pitch and give him the ball, he is going to be creative and he is going to make things work. As I mentioned in either yesterday's video or the day before, playing with the wingers the way we do, we have them cutting in off of the wings. So for him to be able to use both feet pretty much confidently i think he's going to be a player that will do really really well for us uh, the next player was noah mabamba he's a defensive midfielder a midfielder 
and can also play as an attacking midfielder on the right. Not too sure why that versatility is there, but he seems capable of doing it in terms of pace 15, acceleration 15, first touch of 16, dribbling a 13, passing a 15. He really is built as a player that he's going to develop into a bit of a worldie. Another one that he's going to try and step into that Nico role, uh, the gap that was left by both him and Seavold. I think once we develop him, he is going to be an absolute baller and a bit of a bargain at the price we paid of 17.5, rising to 20. And the last player we signed was one to shore up the defence, Namdi Collins. He's a player that, when you just look at you think, yes, we can see why you've done this. 20 million, uh, no, value is 16 to 21 million pounds. He's 20 years old. Uh, just look at him, six foot four, jump and reach 17, acceleration 17, pace of 16, tackling of 14, heading of 15. He's a player that once he develops fully, he's going to be an absolute star. Come from Borussia Dortmund, I think we have got a bit of a steal there. And as I said, these are the players that we want to sign. Just trying to improve the squad in the areas that we need. Getting the younger players in, getting the Champions League quality players in as we really are going to try and make a push in this fourth season for Champions League glory. So, that's the money that we've spent. What is left in the bank? Let's jump in and have a look at the finances then. So, £47.5 million is still in the bank. There is £10.9 million in a transfer budget. Again, didn't spend it all. Wanted to leave a little bit going forwards. Thought it would probably be irresponsible to just blast everything out. Means that in the winter... We already have a building block. If we move one or two players on, we'll obviously get more money. But I'm more than happy to have left £10.9 million in the bank to move forwards. The wage budget is up to £1.056 million. We are only spending 901000 So there is the budget there to go out and buy a couple of players in the winter if we need to. In terms of the club vision then, this always really is the same things. Uh, the Red Bull clubs have this way of doing things and their club cultures are pretty similar. So developed club, uh, players using the club's youth system, they're satisfied. We're not really doing it now. As I said, we are bringing players in that are of the age that are going to go straight into the first team. So a little bit difficult to be developing players in the youth system. They are having good intakes, but nowhere near as good as the money we are spending on the kids we are buying. Ghanaian and Malian players, we can't do that anymore. Uh, play high tempo pressing football, they're delighted. Play possession football, pleased. And play entertaining football, they are pleased. Uh, work within the wage budget on course for that. Sign young players to develop for a profit, as we've just shown Nico is one of the first ones, really, that we have bought in for 10, sold on for 20. Give the club quite a good turnaround on that deal. And their minimum two-year contracts for first-team players, this is the one that I don't think really should be a thing we're judged on. I would never give a new signing a two-year contract, and we know all I would, but I don't think that's what it's aimed at. Uh, into the current season then. So they want us to be competitive in the Champions League. They want to win the Bundesliga and they want to win the OFB Cup. So they want back-to-back -back domestic doubles and they want us to be Champions League good. Hopefully, the players we're buying, the squad we are moulding, it's all going to come together and we are going to have a run. Uh, by the end of the 25-26 season then, they want us to have won a domestic cup and they want to continue winning the Bundesliga. That shouldn't be too difficult considering the fact we are by far the best team in the league and we are getting stronger and stronger each season. So, let's have a quick look at the competitions tab to see how we have started the brand new season. We have played six games. We are not top of the league, which is strange. We have played six, won four, drew two, goal difference of 12 and 14 points. Stonegrats are top on the basis they have won one more game and drawn one less, but we have a better goal difference. They have the better points total. In terms of the Champions League, we have been drawn in a group with Juventus, Porto and Dinamo. And in terms of the OFB Cup, in the second round we have Reed. Or Reed. Um, looking at the schedule then, just to fill in the gaps as to how we have got to where we are. We started off here with the league. Giesdorf, we beat them 9-0. And then played another friendly to warm up for the Bundesliga kickoff, where we won 4 0 against Tyrol in the first game. We beat AWM 2 1 in the Bundesliga. LASK, we drew 1 1. Didn't play very well. Okafor did give us the lead, and then we conceded late on. Uh, we won 3 0 against Altach in the Bundesliga. Pembele, Okafor, and Scarlett getting the goals there. Hartberg managed to get a 0 0 draw. They withstood the barrage of shots and possession that we had got out with a point and then we battered Rapid Vienna 5-1 in the Bundesliga in the last game before we come back. 
Gilmore scoring two, Johansson scoring, Shirky scoring and Marcos Leonardo with the goals. So it's been a bright start to the season. As I said, looking at the league table, we are not top, but we are second. We are within touching distance. There are two other clubs with us, though, on 14 points. LASK and Wolfsburg AC, both right there with us. Uh, should we have a quick run through of some stats? Let's just show you what actually happened in terms of the player stats then. So most goals at this stage of the season is Grieger, but you can see Dane Scarlett is right there on four goals already. As I said, I think he's a player in this season. He needs to be pushing on and developing. And we're going to give him the game time this season to be able to do that. Uh, in terms of most assists, Okafor, three. Gilmore with three. Nothing to be said there. Billy Gilmore really is developing into a fantastic footballer in this game. Uh, most shots... Ryan Shirky with 16 on the list there. Most player of the match awards, Timothy Pembele with just a single one there. Most key passes, this is Billy Gilmore's zone again, topping the charts after just a three-game sample. Uh, Ryan Shirky is also on the list, as is Okafor, but Billy Gilmore is already operating at the top level. Uh, most tackles, Florian Frick, Billy Gilmore getting onto that list too. Most dribbles made, Ryan Shirky with 28 now this season. Most clean sheets, Luka Maric is leading the way, but Joe Bursic is there with three. And few is conceded, Luka Maric, but Joe Bursic also on that list. So the last thing to look at then before we jump into another episode, once this disappears, is the assistant report. Let's show you what he thinks our best 11 is. So Bursic in goal, Comencia still at left back, Woba, Sole, Pembele, Morton, Johansson, Gilmore, Okafort, Shirky and Scarlett up top. So a few players there to be rotated in and out of the team. None of the new signings are breaking into the first team yet. But I'm pretty sure as the season moves on, they will start to force their way in. There are a lot of games this season. We've got the Bundesliga, Champions League, Cup games. There's a lot of rotation to come. So all those players that have signed will get the chance to prove themselves. And I'm pretty sure we are going to have a fantastic season going forward. So we're at the 4th of September 2024. That means we are pretty much done here. Tomorrow, we're going to jump forward to around the 3rd of February. We're going to get that winter transfer window done. There was 10 million left in the transfer budget from this window. We're probably going to spend that. We will probably bring a few more players in and maybe some players leaving the club. So we'll go through that tomorrow. We'll also check how we are getting on in the competition to the halfway turn of the season. And we will show you what we can do to improve and where we might be come the end of the season. So for this one then, I'm going to start wrapping it up there. If you're at this point of the video, you're still listening to me, firstly, a big thank you. Secondly, if you haven't hit the like and subscribe button, please consider doing so. It helps the channel so, so much. I really do appreciate everybody who takes their time to come watch the videos, interacts with the channel. I really, really do appreciate it. But for this one, I am going to leave it there. Go check another video out on the channel. There is something for everybody. Maybe you'll find something that's a bit of interest to you you but for this one i'm going to wrap it up and i will catch you on another video very very soon